In this video, I'll be ranking every Minecraft mob in a tier list. That's right, I'll be ranking the absolute worst and the best Minecraft mobs all in this video. If you don't know, the way this tier list works is that there's five tiers, best, good, average, faulty, and bad, and I'll be putting each Minecraft mob in one of these tiers. And now, let's rank our first mob, Silverfish. So when I just said Silverfish, you probably thought of the portal room in a stronghold. And that's for good reason, because let's be honest, where else would you have ever seen a Silverfish? Now, Silverfish spawn from infested blocks, which are blocks that look identical to different types of stone, like stone bricks, cobblestone, regular stone, and deep slate. But once you break these imposter blocks, then you'll unleash a flurry of silverfish trying to kill you. Now silverfish don't really hurt you that bad, but they can knock you into lava, which is especially common in the portal room of a stronghold. Silverfish also drop nothing except for XP, and they're really hard to hit because of how small they are. Silverfish are a faulty tier. Now goats. Goats are a mob that's spawn in mountain biomes, and they like to ram you. Yep, that's right, they'll ram you. So if a mob or player is standing still for a certain amount of time, the goat will see this as an opportunity to put its head down and start ramming. Along with ramming, goats will also jump pretty high with a maximum of 10 blocks. Now just like cows, goats could also be milked with a bucket, so that's useful if you like crafting cake. But other than that, goats don't benefit you all that much. But honestly, to me, goats just look pretty cool, especially when they're ramming or jumping. Goats are an average tier. Husks. Husks are essentially desert zombies, although unlike zombies, they can't burn in the sunlight. Now husks look like zombies and walk like zombies. They have a different texture, but aside from that, they basically are just zombies. One thing husks do differently from zombies is that when they attack you, they'll apply a hunger effect to you, which is a pretty neat touch to make this mob feel more like its own. Just like zombies, husks drop rotten flesh and can spawn with items like iron swords, shovels, and armor. Husks aren't bad, but they just seem like they were added to make deserts feel more exciting. Husks are an average tier. Striders. Added in 1.16, Striders were Mojang's reaction to everyone wanting one of these. Mojang saw that we wanted a way to traverse lava and they delivered. Striders are similar to pigs in that you could put a saddle on them and get a warped fungi on a stick and start riding one of them. Striders are extremely slow on land, but oh boy, in lava you're not catching one of these things. Not only are striders slower outside of lava, but they just don't like the land in general. They will frown and start to shake anytime they're not in lava. I guess they're cold blooded? I don't know. You could also breed striders if that's your thing, but overall, striders are a good tier. Bats. So bats are just bats. No, I'm serious, they really don't do much else. So bats are those things you hear squeaking and flying around in caves. They won't attack you and they don't drop anything. The only redeeming factor bats have is that they'll hang upside down, but other than that, they don't really do anything interesting. Faulty tier. Now strays. So similar to husks, strays are a type of skeleton that only spawns in snowy biomes. They look a little different from normal skeletons, sporting what seems to look like some torn up clothes, but that's not the only difference. Strays also shoot arrows that affect you with slowness. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, it's just a thing. Now if you're in a snowy biome, then a skeleton has an 80% chance to spawn as a stray, as long as it's above ground and under the sky. They drop everything a normal skeleton would, with the exception of a chance to get an arrow of slowness instead of normal arrows. Strays are pretty much skeletons that look more cool. Average tier. Next Next up, Endermites. So Endermites are little hostile mobs that seem to be related to Endermen and the Ender Dragon somehow. I don't think it's confirmed how they're related though. But either way, Endermites are the smallest hostile mob in all of Minecraft, even smaller than Silverfish. They only have a 5% chance of spawning when you throw an Ender Pearl, which makes them one of the rarest mobs in all of Minecraft. Endermen will also attack Endermites for no good reason, pretty rude in my opinion. But Endermites will attack you no matter what, and they don't drop anything but XP, if that even counts. So overall, with how rare they are and with nothing to drop, Endermites are just a faulty tier. Llamas. So llamas were added in one of the worst Minecraft updates of all time, but does that make them a bad mob? Let's see, llamas are found mostly in savannah and mountain biomes and can actually be tamed. You could technically ride them too, but you can't put a saddle on them, so it's kind of useless to ride them. But what you can do is put a chest on them and have them carry a whole bunch of stuff for you. Different llamas could carry different amounts 
amount of items, with stronger llamas being able to carry more and weaker llamas less. Llamas could also spit at you, which doesn't do a lot of damage and is just more of a joke than anything. You could put carpets on llamas to make them look pretty snazzy. This doesn't add any benefit besides making them look cool though. Now while llamas were added in one of the worst updates of all time, llamas themselves aren't that bad, although it's a shame you can't ride them. Average tier. Now sheep. Sheep are an OG in the Minecraft mob world, and although they are old, does that mean they're bad? Sheep could come in a variety of colors, white, pink, rainbow. Now you could shear sheep with a shear to collect their wool, and whatever color wool the sheep has is the color you'll collect when you shear them. So if you ever wanted a mass collection of yellow wool, well you know where to get it. You can also collect the wool of the sheep using a different method, but that's a little more on the violent side. But if you do decide to go down that path, then you'll not only get yourself some wool, but also some raw mutton, which is always a good source of food. Sheep are all around decently useful, but not amazing. Sheep are a pretty low good tier. Now cod. The <laughs> edible cod. The, the fish! So what can you really say about cod? I mean, it's cod we're talking about here. It swims, it's brown, and it drops raw cod, and possibly bones sometimes. Cod isn't bad or good, so I guess it's just an average tier. Hoglins, the mix between a cow and a pig of the nether. The hoglin is a big warthog looking creature that will fling you up into the air with their horns. Hoglins mostly spawn in crimson forests in the nether and are afraid of warped fungi. I don't know why, they just are. When you defeat a hoglin, they drop raw pork chops and sometimes leather. Now hoglins are also breedable, which makes them the only hostile mob that is breedable. Well, except for killer bunnies, but do those really count? Hoglins can be pretty hard to defeat because they actually have a lot of health and the reward for defeating them isn't really worth it. Hoglins are a faulty tier. The Elder Guardian. So I already touched on the Elder Guardian in my Minecraft boss tier list, but I think it's a pretty annoying mob to fight since you're almost always underwater when you're fighting it. And it doesn't drop anything all that special. I think the Elder Guardian is a faulty tier. Now Snow Golems. Just like Iron Golems, Snow Golems can be created. But surprisingly, Snow Golems can actually spawn naturally if an Enderman put a carved pumpkin next to two snow blocks. But it's so astronomically rare for this to even happen that it's almost a myth. But as for Snow Golems themselves, in certain colder biomes, they'll actually leave behind a trail of snow. And will also melt if they get wet or if they're in a hot temperature temperature biome. And by melt, I mean they will die. But if you keep them away from water or heat, then snow golems will throw snowballs at any hostile mobs. These snowballs don't exactly hurt the mobs, but it's the effort that counts. Snow golems are pretty useful if you live in a colder biome, but not so much if you live somewhere hot. Snow golems are in average tier. Slimes. Green, bouncy, and cube. Slimes come in three different sizes, small, medium, and large. They normally spawn in swamps or sometimes underground and are pretty easy to defeat. Medium and large slimes won't drop anything except for XP, but if you kill a small slime then you'll get your hands on a valuable slime ball, which is used to craft things like sticky pistons or slime blocks, which are very useful. Slimes are just a nice mob to run into, unless you're in a super flat world, and they aren't too hard to defeat, and of course give a great drop. Slimes are a good tier. Now a skeleton horse. It's pretty much just the bone structure of a horse in full display. You can ride it like a normal horse and even ride it underwater. It's an interesting biology lesson and a good mob, but it's also pretty rare. Average tier. Now vindicators. So vindicators are just another illager, but instead of something like a crossbow or swords, the vindicator holds an axe instead. But unlike most other illagers, the vindicator has some pretty good drops. The vindicator has an 8.5% chance to drop their axe and a 50% chance to drop an emerald, which could actually be more than one emerald if you eliminate it with the looting enchantment. Not too bad for something that only has 12 hearts of health. The only problem is, is that vindicators only spawn in woodland mansions and raids, so you're not going to be finding them all that often. Overall, vindicators are an average tier. Ravagers. So I already talked about ravagers in my Minecraft boss tier list, so I'm not going to take too long on this one. But I think ravagers are a mob that you just kind of kill to end a raid and aren't too important outside of the saddle that they drop. Faulty tier. 
Shulkers. Shulkers were added in 1.9 and are unlike any other mob, because shulkers look like shulker boxes, or I guess they are shulker boxes. But when you get too close to them, they'll open up and reveal a little head inside of them that shoots little pellets at you. And of course these pellets don't just hurt you, but also give you a levitation effect for 10 seconds. Now what makes shulkers so useful is that when they're defeated, they have a 50% chance to drop a shulker shell, which is used to make a shulker box. And if you don't know, shulker boxes are extremely useful. So without Shulker the mob, then Shulker the box would never exist. Shulkers are very useful and unlike any other mob, Shulkers are a good tier. Now magma cubes, the slimes of the nether. Magma cubes are not everyone's favorite mob, but is that really justified? Now magma cubes spawn only in the nether, and just like slimes, come in three different sizes, but unlike slimes, these magma cubes will hurt a lot more than slimes. Now like I said, magma cubes spawn in the nether, most commonly in basalt biomes, which probably makes magma cubes part of the reason why players dislike the basalt biome so much. Magma cubes drop magma cream, which is used for brewing and to create magma blocks. So magma cream isn't too useful, but it's not worthless. But magma cubes are a little hard to fight, and don't drop anything outstanding, so I think they're a faulty tier. Chickens. The mob everyone always forgets, or at least I always forget. You have cows, sheep, pigs, and for some reason I always seem to forget chickens even exist. Now we all know chickens as chickens, but they weren't always called that. In late 2011, Notch tweeted out that he was renaming chickens to ducks, and after five days and a lot of people complaining, Jeb confirmed that it was just a joke and that chickens will still be called chickens. Now, chickens drop raw chicken, which is one of the few food items that will give you the hunger effect when you eat it. And with that, chickens will also lay eggs, which have a chance to hatch baby chickens if you literally throw them at something. Overall, chickens are pretty cool. Average tier. Now witches. So witches are a mob that are pretty rare. You'll usually find them in a swamp hut or just roaming around during the night. They can attack you by throwing a splash potion at you, which can be either a splash potion of harming, slowness, poison, or weakness. But they don't only throw potions at you, but actually drop them as loot. That's right, if you kill a witch while they are drinking a potion, then there's an 8.5% chance that they will drop that potion, which becomes an even greater chance if you have looting. They also drop items like glass bottles, glowstone, dust, gunpowder, and more. These things can get pretty annoying if they poison you or slow you, but it's a generally nice mob to run into to keep things fresh in your world. Witches are in average tier. Now rabbits. Rabbits were added in 1.8 and come in a variety of colors. When you eliminate a rabbit, you could get a couple of items. There's a chance you could get a rabbit hide, a raw rabbit, a rabbit's foot, and of course XP as well. You can't tame rabbits, but you could breed them, so that's always nice. But honestly, I don't hear anyone ever use rabbits to make a farm, and they're so small that it's hard to kill them easily. Rabbits are in average tier. Now regular guardians. So guardians are the hostile fish you see swimming all around ocean monsters and can be pretty annoying to fight. I mean, anything is pretty annoying to fight in the water, but these things are especially annoying. They'll fire lasers at you and even damage you when you try to hit it, similar to thorns. Now, in terms of loot, they don't drop anything too fancy, usually just a prismarine shard, so it's not really worth trying to fight them anyway. Overall, guardians are a faulty tier. Pufferfish. You gotta love pufferfish, or maybe you don't, but pufferfish are of course a type of fish that are found in the ocean. If you get near them, they'll inflate and become bigger, which is neat, and if you kill them, they'll drop a pufferfish. Yeah, I don't know why you get an item form of the mob you just killed, but either way, you still do, and it can be used for brewing or consumption. Pufferfish are an average tier. Phantoms. You love phantoms, right? I mean, they won the 2017 Minecon mob vote. That must mean they have to be everyone's favorite mob, right? Okay, maybe not. So phantoms are those things you see flying around in the sky, but you won't see them unless you haven't slept for three days. They're just reminding you to go to sleep. I don't see the problem. Well, actually, the problem problem is, is that they will kill you. Phantoms will dive down out of the sky, scream at you, and then you'll take damage. But let's say you're on a 5 hour energy and insomnia prevails, then a phantom will drop a phantom membrane that you could use for brewing or to repair an elytra. Pretty useful. Overall, phantoms are an average tier. Pandas. Pandas are large mobs that only spawn in the jungle biome. What's interesting about pandas is that they have six different personality types, with each panda having one of these personalities. There's normal pandas, lazy, worried, weak, 
playful, and aggressive pandas. Each personality type will make these pandas act in different ways. For example, a lazy panda will lay on its back and is generally slower than normal pandas. Or an aggressive panda will keep attacking you until you die, if provoked. Now you could breed pandas and they have a whole genetic system to determine which variant you'll get in return, it's pretty interesting. Pandas have so many layers and mechanics, it's just a shame that they could only spawn in the jungle, although it makes sense why they can only spawn there. Pandas are a good tier. Now squids. Squids are pretty useful. Well, maybe not. Squids were the first aquatic mob ever added to Minecraft. They're passive mobs and won't hurt you, but they will shoot out black ink if you attack them. And if you keep attacking them and kill the squid, it will eventually drop an ink sack, which is used to dye things black or make black die. So the squids have to die to give you dye. Interesting. Squids are just squids, nothing fancy. Faulty tier. Pillagers. Pillagers are the most common illager that you'll find, and also the weakest. Pillagers come equipped with a crossbow and have their own structure named after them called the Pillager Outpost. Pillagers don't drop anything amazing, just a chance for some arrows and a crossbow. But if the Pillager is a raid captain, then it will drop an ominous banner and give you the bad omen effect. Pillagers aren't anything too special, they're really just pawns for the better illagers. Pillagers are an average tier. Now the Wither. So the Wither I already talked about in my boss tier list, but overall the Wither is a decent mob that's extremely hard to spawn because of how rare Wither Skeleton Skulls are. But it's pretty useful late game for the beacons you could get from the Nether Star. The Wither is a good tier. Drowned. So Drowned were added in 1.13 and are essentially underwater zombies. In fact, if a zombie head is submerged underwater for 30 seconds, it starts converting into a Drowned. And after 15 seconds, it will fully become a Drowned. But Drowned and zombies do have a few differences. First off, this could just be my opinion, but they look cooler than zombies. But aside from that, Drowned have a chance to spawn holding a trident. And if you kill a Drowned holding a trident, there's a small chance it will drop. This is the only way to get a trident, so drowned are actually very important. One thing that is actually pretty good about drowned is that they will stomp on turtle eggs and attack baby turtles, so maybe they're not that bad after all. You know what? Drowned are a good tier. Now, polar bears. Polar bears live in snowy biomes and are pretty tough with 15 hearts of health. They won't attack you unless you try to attack them or their cubs. In fact, if you attack a polar bear cub, then all adult polar bears within the area will attack you. They don't mess around when it comes to those cubs. But while they love their cubs, you can't actually breed polar bears, which isn't too big of a deal because they don't drop anything good anyway. Polar bears are in average tier. Spiders, the most accurately sized mob, if you live in Australia. Spiders are a very common hostile mob that isn't actually always hostile. Because at nighttime, they will kill you, but in the daytime, they have a change of heart. Spiders sometimes drop string and on occasion a spider eye, which is used for, you guessed it, brewing. Spiders can also climb up walls, so that house you made that doesn't have a roof isn't safe. That's pretty much it with spiders. What you see is what you get, and in a controversial choice, I'm gonna put spiders in a faulty tier. Zoglins. Zoglins are basically just zombified hoglins. So literally, when a hoglin goes into the end or the overworld for more than 15 seconds, it literally just turns into a zoglin. Zoglins will attack almost every mob in sight, including hostile mobs. It doesn't drop anything fancy, but it's a cool little addition to the game. Zoglins are a faulty tier. Now Ghasts, the second largest mob in Minecraft, right behind the Ender Dragon. Now Ghasts only spawn in the nether and are the source of many players demise. They shoot fireballs at you and seem to come out at the worst moment. I mean, I'll just be bridging across the world's biggest lava pool and what do you know, I hear a ghast right behind me. And speaking of hearing a ghast, you can't mention a ghast without talking about their iconic sound they make. Here's a little fact a lot of you may not know. The ghast sounds were actually Minecraft sound designer's C418's cat. According to C418, his cat makes a strange noise every time he's disturbed while sleeping. So one day C418 recorded that noise and that's how we have the Minecraft gas noises we hear today. Now that's a great story cool, but is the mob actually good? Well if you kill a gas, it drops a gas tier. <laughs> gas tier, get it? Because this is the gas tier. Anyways, which is used in a lot of potion recipes. So the usefulness of a gas is pretty much depending on whether you like to make potions or not. But other than that, the mob is just okay. Gas are in average tier. 
Next up are cows. Now unlike chickens, cows I think are one of the most recognizable mobs in all of Minecraft. I mean you show someone a cow and they'll know it's from Minecraft, but you show someone a mob like a turtle and that image could be from Blockcraft 3D for all they know. Now cows are pretty unique because they don't only provide you beef, but also leather and milk. Which the milk isn't really that useful, but the leather is actually used in a lot of crafting recipes. And you could also use it to make leather armor if you've hit your head recently. Honestly, cows are just an all-around good mob. Good tier. Now, piglin brutes. Piglin brutes are pretty much just normal piglins, but they can't barter, they're not distracted by gold, and normally hang out around bastions. Piglin brutes are like normal piglins if they only cared about fighting. Piglin brutes are a faulty tier. Zombie villagers. So zombie villagers are just villagers that got turned into zombies. Usually this happens by a zombie attacking a villager, which can only happen on normal and hard mode, not easy mode. You could cure a zombie villager by giving them a golden apple while they are affected by weakness. Very specific, but I guess that makes it more fun. A zombie villager that's been cured will also have lower prices on trades for the person who cured them. So that's actually pretty useful. Surprisingly, there's a lot more to zombie villagers than I thought, but overall, all zombie villagers are a very good average tier. Now parrots, a very rare mob. Parrots spawn in the jungle and only have a 0.2% chance to spawn. I mean that's more rare than people subscribing to me. But while you should subscribe to me, what you shouldn't ever do is trust a parrot because parrots have the ability to mimic certain sounds of mobs. That's right, parrots will imitate sounds such as a zombie's growl or a creeper's hiss, one of the scariest things someone will ever hear. Parrots can also dance to jukeboxes and you can also tame them and they'll follow you around and sit on your shoulder. Parrots are extremely rare, but I think finding one is worth the search. Parrots are a good tier. Wither Skeletons, possibly one of the most disliked and liked mobs in all of Minecraft. So Wither Skeletons are found in the Nether, but not only the Nether, but specifically Nether Fortresses. So I think Wither Skeletons are one of the most disliked mobs in Minecraft because how hard they are to find and how rare it is for them to drop their infamous Wither Skeleton Skull, which you of course need three of to spawn the Wither. But on the other hand, I think they are also one of the most liked mobs in Minecraft because of that rush you get when you finally do get that Wither Skeleton Skull. I mean. When you get that last skull, it just feels amazing. Wither skeletons also give you the wither effect when they hit you, so they're not particularly an easy mob to kill. But overall, finding them and getting their skull to drop is pretty annoying most of the time. Wither skeletons are a faulty tier. Now salmon. Salmon are what I consider to be the most common fish you'll find in the water. I don't know if that's a fact, but it seems right to me, so I'll roll with it. Salmon drop, you guessed it, a raw salmon, and they'll die if they're outside of the water for too long. They don't have lungs faulty tier. Next up, Blazes, the mob that is crucial for beating the game. So Blazes naturally spawn in the nether, and the name doesn't lie, they are on fire. But not only are they on fire, but they also shoot fire and fly. These things are annoying, but once you kill them, there's a 50% chance they'll drop a blaze rod. And with a blaze rod, you could either make a brewing stand or make blaze powder, two very important things in Minecraft. So are Blazes hard to kill? Yes, but is it worth it? Definitely. Blazes are an average tier. Piglins. Piglins are a nether mob that will always attack you unless you're wearing some kind of gold armor. Why you might ask? Greed. That's right, piglins are business pigs that will barter with you for certain gold items. And in return, they'll give you a random item like obsidian, ender pearl, string, or something else. Piglins bartering is a staple for 1.16 plus speedruns, since the piglins could usually give you quick ender pearls, or very, very long ender pearls. Piglins don't drop anything amazing, sometimes they'll just drop what they have equipped, which could be a sword or armor, but nothing special. Piglins have a lot to them and are sort of the poster mob for the next and for all that, I think piglins are a good tier. Now iron golems. So iron golems naturally spawn most commonly in villages and are not only a neutral mob, but will actually defend you and the village. Iron golems will attack any hostile mob on site. These things are born to defend. Well, actually they're not born, they're created. That's right, iron golems can actually be created. With only four iron blocks, a pumpkin, jack-o'-lantern, or carved pumpkin, you could have yourself your very own iron golem. Iron golem 
golems also drop anywhere between 3 to 5 iron ingots when defeated, which means iron golems are a good mob to make a mob farm with and get infinite iron ingots. Iron golems are just an all around good and unique mob. Iron golems are a good tier. Now cave spiders, everyone's favorite mob. As the name implies, cave spiders are found in caves, more specifically mine shafts. They really aren't that much different from normal spiders, except when they hit you, they'll give you a poison effect, which can be pretty annoying, especially since cave spiders usually spawn within a whole mess of cobwebs. Cave spiders are also a lot smaller than normal spiders, which isn't really saying much though, since normal spiders are massive. But really, cave spiders just don't seem all that important, and can just be really annoying to fight. Not the worst, but still a bad tier. Now tropical fish. So tropical fish actually come in 2700 varieties. That's right, 2000 700. Tropical fish only spawn in lukewarm and warm oceans and typically swim together in groups or schools with a maximum of 9 fish per group. If you kill a tropical fish, then a tropical fish will drop a tropical fish. Or as some would call it, Nemo. You killed Nemo. Think about that. Just like salmon, these tropical fish don't have lungs, so that should automatically make them a bad tier. But to be fair, tropical fish are pretty cool with how many variants they have. Tropical fish are an average tier. Now glow squids, a very controversial mob. So glow squids are basically just squids with a different texture. You might think they at least glow, right? No, they don't actually glow, they just look like they do. The only difference between squids and glow squids is their texture, these little stars that glow squids leave behind, and the color of the glow squids ink. Also, the glow squid drops glow ink sacs instead of regular ink sacs, but that's all, they're not really different. Now I would excuse all of the similarities if the glow squid actually glowed, but it just doesn't. To top it all off, the reason the glow squid was added to the game wasn't exactly a very popular one. Overall, the glow squid is a faulty tier. Now bees. So bees are quite controversial, not because of the mob itself, but more so because they were the main focus of a pretty underwhelming update, that being 1.15. But other than that, bees are pretty cool. They live in beehives and will only attack if provoked, unless you're the wither. They will help pollinate your crops to help them grow and also produce honey for you to collect. Aside from bees being being uncomfortably large, there's really nothing to complain about. Bees are an average tier. Mushrooms, the mix between a cow and a mushroom. Now mushrooms are a cow that's covered in mushrooms and only spawn in the mushroom fields biome. Now mushrooms might look a little different from cows, but actually behave almost completely the same. One of the only differences is that when you milk a mushroom with a bowl, you get mushroom stew, which is pretty useful. Now you probably think of a mushroom as their iconic red color, but mushrooms also come in a brown variant as well. And when a mushroom gets struck by lightning, it will change its color to the opposite of what it was. So brown to red or red to brown. Other than that, mushrooms are pretty much just rare cows. Average tier. Now donkeys. I mean, let's be honest here. Donkeys are basically a slow horse that you could store stuff on. It's cool for going on long trips, but other than that, it's just a donkey. Faulty tier. To be fair, although the donkey is not amazing, it could be worse. It could be a mule. Now mules. What? what what are we doing here? It's just a donkey, but worse. Mules are a bad tier. Evokers, a very unique mob. Evokers can be found in woodland mansions and village raids. Now, cool, why are evokers so unique? Well, they're the only source of totems of undying. That's right, you have a 100% chance of getting a totem of undying after defeating an evoker. But defeating the evoker isn't exactly easy, though. The evoker is the second hardest illager to defeat in Minecraft, right behind the illusioner, which isn't even in Bedrock Edition. The Evoker has multiple ways to attack. The first is its Fang attack, where it will raise fangs out of the ground that damage you. The Evoker could also summon Vexes, which are small little annoying mobs that fly around and attack you. Now while fighting the Evoker does seem hard, it doesn't seem unfair. It's an extremely unique fight with a really good drop at the end if you manage to defeat the Evoker. Honestly, I think the Evoker is a best tier. Skeletons, a very OG mob. Skeletons are one of the few ranged mobs in Minecraft and are one of the hardest common mobs to fight. Skeletons have 
bows and will shoot at you with arrows. Unfortunately, you can't pick up the arrows they shoot, but if you kill a skeleton, there's a chance that they will drop arrows as an item. And of course, you could pick those up. But that's not all they drop. They also drop bones and have a small chance to drop the equipment they use, like their bows or any armor they might have spawned with. Skeletons are a very popular mob to make mob farms out of, which makes skeletons a very good source of bones. Like most mobs, skeletons will burn in the sunlight, which is strange because sun is a natural source of vitamin D, which actually strengthens your bones and shouldn't burn them. But that's besides the point. Skeletons aren't too complicated. What you see is pretty much what you get, and for that, I think they're pretty average. Average tier. Now, foxes. So foxes were added in the 1.14 village and pillage update and can only be found in taiga biomes or spruce biomes if you're a hipster. Now just like ocelots, foxes will run away from you unless you're crouching. They won't attack you though, but they will attack rabbits, chickens, and various fish. But can you guess what the best thing about foxes is? They attack baby turtles! That's what I'm talking about! Foxes also have one of the cutest poses in the whole game, and that's when they're sleeping. Foxes will also make random random screeching noises during nighttime, not helpful, but still interesting. There's so much more to foxes, like how they can trust you and how they can hold items in their mouth, but we'd be here all day if I mentioned all of it. Honestly though, foxes I think are a best tier. Now the Ender Dragon. So just like the Elder Guardian, I already talked about the Ender Dragon in my Minecraft boss tier list. But I do think that the Ender Dragon is almost like the culmination of all the other hostile mobs wrapped into one. It really tests all of your strengths and weaknesses and drops really good stuff. I think the Ender Dragon is a best tier cats. Not to be confused with ocelots or the 2019 movie, cats are small, tameable pets that are mostly found in swamp huts and villages. Now before 1.14, the cats that you would find wandering around now were just called ocelots and wouldn't become cats until you tamed them. But after 1.14, they were retextured and given the official name Stray Cats, and the ocelot just became a non-tameable mob. On top of all this, cats are the only thing creepers and phantoms are afraid of. If you have a cat nearby, any creepers and phantoms will just run away. Cats are always a good addition if you like to tame animals in your world, and they offer some protection. Cats are a pretty good average tier. Before we move on, I want to tell you guys that one person who subscribes to me in the next four days will get $500. So if you want $500, then subscribe right now. Now another big one, zombies. So zombies are what I consider to be the default hostile mob. It's just so basic, but not in a bad way. I mean, zombies only melee attack you at a very close range. They don't run, jump, or do anything fancy. They just walk very slowly towards you. They drop rotten flesh and some XP, sometimes a carrot or some equipment they were wearing, but other than that, they are pretty much just zombies. Now that's not bad. I think there should be a mob that's very plain and standard, and that's what the zombie's purpose is. I gotta say, Zombies are a best tier. Now ocelots. So ocelots are pretty much just cats, but the big difference is that instead of taming them, you could only trust them. Ocelots also only spawn in the jungle, but other than that, almost everything is the same between ocelots and cats. Creepers and phantoms are afraid of ocelots, just like they are with cats. And I gotta be honest, ocelots are just cats, but a little worse. Ocelots are a faulty tier. Dolphins. Added in the 1.13 aquatic update, dolphins are a mob that has a lot going for it. First off, dolphins will follow you whether you're in a boat or just swimming. And if you're swimming near dolphins, you'll get an effect that boosts your swim speed called Dolphin's Grace. Or just a speed boost if you're on Bedrock Edition. Also, if you feed dolphins a raw cod or salmon, they will then locate the nearest shipwreck, ocean ruins, or buried treasure. Dolphins will also swim in groups if there is more than just one, and they will often jump in and out of the water while they are swimming. Honestly, dolphins just have so much going for them, and for all this, I think they are a best tier. Now pigs. So pigs are probably among one of the mobs you think of when someone says mob. They're a classic. Pigs drop a raw pork chop that of course could be used to cook to make a cooked pork chop. But if you're a vegan, then you could always choose to just ride the pig instead. If you craft yourself a carrot on a stick and somehow find a saddle, then you could slap that saddle on a pig and get up to speeds as almost as fast as sprinting. Well, if all else fails, then you could always just look at it. Yeah, pigs are in average tier. Now, Endermen, another very old mob. Endermen are a mob that are found in the overworld, but mostly found in the end. So Endermen won't attack you unless you look them directly in the eyes. I don't know if they're antisocial or what, but looking at them directly will trigger them to attack you. Endermen are also very large and attack you by melee hitting you, so they're not hard to hit, but what's hard about fighting Endermen is their speed 
speed and the fact that they can teleport. But once you do kill them, they have a chance to drop the beloved Ender Pearl, which of course can be used for a variety of things. Now, Endermen can also pick up blocks and just walk away with them, so that can be slightly annoying sometimes. But since Ender Pearls are key to getting to the end, and since Endermen are just very unique, I think Endermen have to at least be a good tier. Now, Wolves, or better known as Dogs. So, Wolves are the mob that are one of, if not the best, for taming. If you see a wild wolf, then just give it a couple of bones, and now you got yourself a best friend forever. Or until it accidentally walks into lava, or gets blown up by a creeper rest in peace. But anyways, wolves are so loyal that they will even attack hostile mobs for you. Or if you want them to stay home, then you could just click on them and they'll sit down forever. It's for a good reason why so much of the Minecraft fanbase loves wolves, because there's just not a lot to complain about. I mean, they'll even shake off the water if they got wet. I'm convinced wolves are a best tier. Wandering Traders. Now, let's be honest here, a wandering trader doesn't exist. It's just in your imagination. What a wandering trader really is, is a fancy way for saying two leads. Bad tier. Now, horses. Added in 1.6, horses are what I consider to be one of the best methods of travel in Minecraft. But are they a good mob, though? Well, horses are found mostly in plains and savanna biomes, and come in all different kinds of colors and all have different stats. There's not just one kind of horse. Some horses are slow and white, some jump high and are gray, some are fast and black, and some have dots and have a lot of health. But one thing all horses have in common is that you could always tame and ride them. Now horses don't drop anything that good, just some leather, so it's a lot more useful to use them for riding. Horses could also jump while you're riding them, with some being able to jump as high as 5.5 blocks, which I think could be really useful. The reason why I think horses are so much better than donkeys and mules is because of their better speed and jump strength compared to them. With all this, horses are a best tier. Oxalotls. Added in 1.17, oxalotls have become almost universally loved among the entire Minecraft community. I mean, hating oxalotls is like hating dogs. Are you even human if you do? Now, oxalotls come in five official colors, or seven if you count the missing trailer oxalotl from the video I made and the green oxalotl people have seen in that same trailer. Now, oxalotls do more than just swim around. They'll actually attack other underwater mobs, which I think is pretty cool unless you've made friends with a fellow squid, then they're just murderers, but overall oxalotls are a good tier. Now the big one, Creepers, one of the most recognizable characters in all of video game history. What started from an accidental reshaping of a pig turned into something that probably has generated billions in revenue. But how do Creepers hold up in the actual game? Well, Creepers are armless mobs that spawn in the dark and explode if you get too close to them. Many find them to be extremely annoying since they could destroy all the progress of a house after one little hissing sound. Creepers don't try to attack your in-game physical health, they try to attack your real life mental health. Now if you do manage to kill a creeper, creepers drop gunpowder which is used to make TNT so you could blow more things up. It's really this circle of explosions. One unique thing about creepers is that they don't burn in the sunlight unlike most other hostile mobs which just adds to the scariness. But honestly, while they are annoying and scary, creepers are still loved by almost everyone. Creepers have to be a best tier. Now turtles, I gotta say, if you like Minecraft turtles, why? I mean, just look at this thing. It crawls around and drops seagrass when it dies. I just don't see the appeal. One slightly redeeming factor that turtles have is that when a baby turtle grows up, they'll drop a scoot, which can then be used to make a turtle shell that helps you stay underwater longer. But even with that, the bad still outweighs the good. Turtles are a bad tier. Villagers. I mean, do I even need to introduce villagers? So villagers have so many things you could do with them, but let's get this one out of the way. Villagers let you trade with them, and depending on the job the villager has will mean you get different trades. There's also a whole popularity system with villagers, and if you have a bad reputation, you'll get worse trading prices among other things. But villagers don't just trade. They farm, you could breed them, they could panic, they even sleep. What's not to love about these things? But seriously, there's so much more to villagers that I could go into, but it it would take me 4 quintillion years just to do that. But even with everything I just said here, I think villagers are a best tier. Now just like these mobs were forced to be added to Minecraft, I was forced to make this video. Also subscribe if you want $500.